What's up, beer fam? Welcome to Fact Friday. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to pour a nitro beer in three easy steps. Step one, grab a nitro beer. Step two, turn the beer upside down three times. Step three, open the beer and pour it straight down. So you're probably wondering why the beer looks this way. Nitrogen beers are composed of 70% nitrogen and 30% carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide, because it has bigger bubbles, they rise to the top faster while the nitrogen goes down and then ends up creating a cascade effect, as you can see there. Once the nitrogen actually goes up, it creates a thick, dense foam of head and it gives it a better appearance. So due to the low amounts of CO2 within the beer, not only does it look great, but it also leaves a creamy texture, a unique appearance, and a smooth mouthfeel. So how was nitrogen adapted in brewing? Before the 1950s, brewers would use a wooden cask to store and deliver their beers to pubs and bars. Each wooden cask would contain live yeast and unfermented beer. Once it was fermented, people would use hand pumps or gravity in order to transfer the beer from the wooden cask into a pint glass. The problem with this was that air would go inside of the wooden cask and then break down all the chemicals that are inside of the beer, resulting in mold and other things growing. And I'm pretty sure nobody wants mold within their beer, right? Once metal kegs were introduced, it changed the game. It allowed brewers to have a serving vessel in which they could store and add pressure using CO2 gas. This allowed brewers to deliver a finished filtered beer that not only lasts longer, but also stayed fresh. So you may be wondering, who were the first brewers to actually market the nitro beer? Even though they weren't the ones to pioneer the nitro beer, when celebrating their 200th anniversary, Guinness decided to market nitrogen within their beers and they started promoting it within Ireland and the UK. They called their nitrogen system the easy serving system. This allowed many pubs and bars to have access to nitrogen taps. One of the major problems that they faced in 1959 and are currently still facing is the large investment when it comes to the complex science behind the self-contained nitrogen vessel. Many companies use special widgets inside of the can in order to store the nitrogen. For example, Left Hand Brewing uses a special widget made of plastic that looks like a top hat. They fill it with nitrogen gas and is placed at the bottom of the can. So when you open it, nitrogen gas comes out from the widget that has tiny little holes and then mixes and agitates the beer, creating the nitrogen effect. If you like this content, please let us know in the comments below and remember to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.